pen has got less than 0.3% THC. And that is the so-called medical standard grade of CBD. So it must be less than 0.3%, so it doesn't have the whole high training and the whole side effects of that. So the Trinity, let's combine all that we know together right now. So first of all, I've introduced you to a new system, endocannabidolar system. So we know CBR1 and CBR2. Introduced to you marijuana and hemp. Uh, those two very, very same looking plants, but very, very slightly different in properties, especially the content of THC. We introduced the concept of THC versus CBD. Okay, let's combine all together and what do we know? So we know CBD is derived from hemp. It does not cause the high effect. It acts mainly on CBR2 and there are no side effects. It's well tolerated at high doses. So if you even give too much CBD, very little to none side effects at all. Okay, it's got many medical uses, many medical uses, um, in, including you know, the benefit. So on the other hand, THCs, is derived from marijuana, uh, marijuana, which you can get much higher content of THC. You can't get too much from CBD at all. Oh, uh, sorry, from hemp at all, because the hemp content is very low. So from marijuana, you can you can get a uh, sort of THC content, I think between five to ten percent, depending on what plant you use, how you process it, how it's cut and dried. It causes that's why it causes a high euphoric sensation because it acts mainly on CBR one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's got many side effects, usually linked with the high sensation. Like you said, dry mouth, red eyes, <coughs> increased heart rate, um, and, uh, obviously uh, the, the uh, psychoactive component as well, uh, making things look very different compared to what they should look like. Uh, it's got multiple medical use as well, so it's not completely without medical use. But there are some medical use for it as well, as we explain later on. So, when do we use it? When to use? And I'm using this more in a animal context. Because in humans, they have a long list of things that they use, as we explained before, anxiety, stress, and all sorts of things. But in animal context, you know, we use it more of pain relief. We have had almost any other pain relief in physical therapy, and they're still struggling. And why not? So to speak. Okay? Um, all patients who cannot tolerate oral medications, like uh, dog or a cat with kidney issues, they can go on non steroidals. Uh, they can but they are in pain for various reasons, and certainly CBD oil may be indicated in those situations. Uh, patients who have had chronic diseases for many, many years, they want something they can use for long term, so to speak, rather than just uh, short term with all the side effects and things like that. Increasingly, it's been used on epilepsy as well, and uh, I certainly have got a, uh, a, a client who, whose uh, dog has got uh, epilepsy, and she has been using CBD oil, um, the dog hasn't had a fit, so whether that is because CBD oil or she does a lot of other things in terms of giving the right food and reducing stimulus and things like that. Um, so that is also a uh, uh, possibility. Okay, so what is available? Okay, so yes, we talk about CBD oil, we know it may work, it may not work, it may be quite useful in some circumstances. What can we actually physically get? Okay, so there are a lot of variations in the market available. So a few different things. Firstly, it is not a drug, so you don't, you don't need a prescription to get it. Okay, it's considered a food supplement. Okay, uh, and nextly, there is not many that is actually marketed for dogs and cats. Okay, so a lot is just human medication and they extrapolate the results or they just use it off license basically. Okay, and uh, like I said, it's still considered for something. There has been interest with the vet, um, uh, the VMD, which is the Veterinary uh, Medicine Operate, which is the organization that regulates drugs to classify CBD as a drug because uh, of uh, the use of it, but also such that it can be regulated because of the, um, all the different variation with it. And, as I said, it's hard to assess the efficacy and the bioavailability in the pets just because CBD that works for us. Your dogs and your cats' uh, physiological system is that they're not human. Just because it works for us, it's hard to say how much do they actually get it in X amount of CBD. So uh, if it is regulated, then at least they will get into some getting more so evidence based results testing. So we can actually 
give something that you know, potentially have some evidence rather than just hearsay and yeah, yeah it works in humans and all this sort of thing and astronomy laws without knowing what formulation to get. Um, there's this particular company that is called uh, Kenny Dog, and uh, that is one that we tend to use quite often uh, because, uh, first of all, they don't sell it to the public, so it's not as though anyone can buy it to, to purchase from them. You go through the training and you, you, you need to see what they do, uh, and they come in sort of different batches of uh, strength and formulations, and they do provide the oral paste. That is uh, used by quite a lot of different vets uh, with uh, success. So that is one of the, if there's anything evidence based, that is the one that most uh, vets will go for. In dog, and it is uh, quite a uh, in the oral paste. So, in summary, in summary, we have discussed the three different things. The endocannabinoid system, as we know, is a fairly newly discovered system and it's only very recently gotten into the general literature so people know more about it. We talked about CBR1 versus CBR2. We also discussed about marijuana versus hemp, which one you get high, which one has the medicinal effects. We also talked about THC and CBD. We also discussed a little bit about usage and availability.